Bible says we should consider carefully what we hear and how we hear. Is that okay? And uh, I know it is hard for the flesh many times to, to, to see how to balance things up. But we need the wisdom of God. That's why we need to internalize what we hear. Because sometimes you hear something, you're like, how am I going to, you know, act on this? You see, as you internalize what you hear, the wisdom of God will come to you. And then you're going to see it. Because the Bible says, line upon line, precept upon precept. Is that okay? That is how you learn. Line upon line. You see, let me give you something that will help you. You see, some of us, the Bible says some people are forever learning. And they don't come into understanding. They don't come into any whatever. You know why that is? One of the reasons why that is, is because when you hear something, you're like, wow, wow, wow. You see, one of the ways you learn is to see how to relate what you are hearing with what you've already been taught. I personally do not really appreciate people who always make it look like, ah, ah. Because to me, it's a revelation that the same way you are saying ah now, that's how you say ah to another message. Because there are messages you have heard. Are you following what I'm saying? That's why in primary school, you have year seven, year eight, year whatever, you're building. You must have a way of building. And sometimes, not even sometimes, many times, it's as you meditate on what you are hearing that you are going to see the connection. Because the neck bone is joined to the don't let me go there because I'm not into biology, but you know what I'm saying. Things are joined together. Everything is connected to everything. Is that okay? So, don't just run off. If you heard a message today on holiness and you heard one on faith, you must know how holiness connects with faith. Because the problem with the body of Christ is that when I hear about holiness, I throw faith away. And when I think I'm hearing about faith, what do I do? I think I don't need to be holy. Because to me, I do not see the connection between holiness and prosperity. But you must meditate in the word of God to see the connection. Because the same God who says, I'm the God, your Lord, your God, I'm holy, and says, be ye holy, that same God says, he is the one who takes pleasure in your prosperity. And that's a problem in the body of Christ. Where we have people who have branded themselves holiness people. We are the holiness people, so they are so holy and poor. And they live next to Grumble Alley. And then you have people who are so prosperous, amen, all they talk about is money, 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 money. And they don't know about holiness. They don't want to know. Because to them, there is a confusion in their system. So they are like, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. And it's mental laziness, you see. Are you following me? Because the same God who says you should be holy says he wants to prosper you. But it is too much for us to see how we can put the two together. And the problem we have all the time is for us to... That's why in the Bible, Paul was talking about carnality. I'm for Paul. I'm for Apollos. Because it's not, they were, it was so too much for them to connect. When some people take off on motivational speaking, they just take off. And they feel that when they get into motivation and speaking, then when what they can't actually think about holiness because holiness to them is going to hold them down. So you have a lot of people who are prosperous and crooked. We need the Daniels to rise up. We need the Josephs. We need people who will learn to win by righteousness. Are you following what I'm saying? Because it is a major challenge. When people hear about holiness, they think, oh, I'm subdued now. I'm supposed to live a holy life. Holiness unto the Lord. You can be bubbly and holy. Because holiness has nothing to do with your looks. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So we don't have to be like that. And I pray that God will grant us his wisdom. But the key is what? In meditation. Meditate. Internalize. Have you noticed that when people speak to you and you internalize what they say to you, you see the connection. Sometimes when they bring correction to you, you are quick to defend yourself. And because you are quick to talk back, you don't even see what they are saying. 
That's why the Bible says every man should be what? Slow to talk. We are very quick to talk. Oh, you don't understand my situation. Oh, you don't understand. Just keep quiet for some time and listen. You know, like that reverend in Big Mama, you know Big Mama? Said God has been telling me to, be, to keep quiet. God should be telling some of us that. Just keep quiet and what? Listen. Because many times, every time I have listened, I've seen the connection. Because God is not the author of confusion. The same God who wants to prosper you wants you to be holy. But how come we have holiness church? We have prosperity church. You know, we just came back from America and I was speaking to the pastor's wife over there, was it two days ago? And she was just telling me, she said, look, you know, it's been, it was such a blessing because I was speaking to her again. I said, thank you. You know, I called her. I said, thank you for taking care of us. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your gifts. Thank you and all of that. And she said, look, we really thank you people. You really blessed us. You people really blessed us and all of that. And then she was telling me how, you know, the, they've been, because the, the, the message I did on the Sunday there was what I did at the women's breakfast, be a winner. And she was saying to me, she said, we've not stopped talking about repay no evil for evil. She said, there's a slang in our church now. She said, on Wednesday, we were talking about it in church. She said, my husband, the pastor, was just going on and on about it. He said, one guy was there, an Air Force officer or whatever he was, anyway, in the military, he was there. And the guy said, oh my God, I've been a Christian for a long time. Anywhere you go to, people just talk about prosperity, prosperity. People don't talk about things like this. And these are things of everyday life. Are you following me? This issue of repaying evil for evil. So even if you were not at the breakfast, get the message, be a winner. That message will bless you. Be a winner. You don't become a winner by hitting back. You become a winner by not repaying evil for evil. Because when you don't repay evil for evil, you know what I found out and I said it there, number one, when you repay evil for evil, you lose your values. And she was saying me that, wow, people have been talking about, it. you lose your values. Because when you say that, well, this person doesn't greet me, I will not greet the person. You become like them. <laughs> you become like them. Well, this person does this to me, so I'm going to do it back. Guess what? You, leave your, your, you, you become like them. So what you are seeing in that person, that person is rude, so I'm going to make sure I'm rude. You become rude too. So you are losing your values. And I remember my daughter said to me, Mom, thank you so much for that message because my housemate, you know, she just wakes up, she doesn't greet anybody. And I started saying, I'm going to do that too. But thank God I came for the breakfast. Because when you have somebody who has no manners, who is rude, the Bible says love is not rude, and you want to pay them back in their own coin, you're not start behaving like them, your nose is in the air, guess what? They won't know you are repaying anybody because you now have become like that. And one of the points I said is that when you are hitting people back and paying them back, guess what? You are going to be on the wrong side of the law. Have you seen when somebody comes, you know, maybe driving, and then they'll just overtake you and do some things, and you want to get back, and then you are the one caught on camera. And you get speedy. <laughs> is that not true? Because you want to get back. So you get on the wrong side of the law. You get in trouble with God. Because, oh, my wife committed adultery, she cheated on me, so I'm going to do that. Now you are also an adulterer. And then you get in trouble with God. You have become that. So if God is going to judge your wife for being an adulteress, you are going to be judged for being an adulterer too. So you must be a winner. Because the Bible says you should overcome evil with good. Don't let evil get the best of you. You get the best out of evil. You will make the most of it. Hallelujah. Don't let evil get the best of you. Don't become somebody. Don't be like them just because you want to get back. So you get the message. Be a winner.